Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome to a pick a card reading tuning into Neptune for whatever messages want to come through. Today, the day I'm filming this, Neptune is going retrograde and this is actually the sixth retrograde we have going on right now. I know most of you are actually going to watch this further down the line, so this video isn't about the retrogrades and it's not about the Neptune retrograde or anything, but I think the fact that she just is going retrograde was the catalyst for me to tune into her. So even if you're watching this later when nothing is retrograde, you're still on some level syncing up with this kind of energy. And the energy we have going on right now is entirely like open. I feel like everything is becoming undefined, almost a little bit like our reality is uh, unwinding or dissolving or like everything is dreaming. I feel like all these retrograde planets are are dreaming and so everything is loose and fluid. Um, so if I seem a little out of it, um, if you guys watch many of my videos you might get a kind of vibe on how I usually am. I might seem a little out of it today because I absolutely am. <laughs> um, I'm having a little trouble talking. I had a bunch of false starts for this intro, you know, because we have Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, Venus, Mercury and now Neptune retrograde and it's just I feel like everything's being blown out of the water and even my dog is feeling it If you guys ever have any pets if you watch how the transit affect them I think that's really telling because they're just reflecting like exactly what is happening happening energetically my dog has been it's like he's going non-linear and dogs aren't particularly linear to begin with right but I keep letting him take me on little walks around around my apartment complex and he's just wandering into all these new places he never usually goes to he's just zigzagging around and he's really uh been really bossy like he doesn't want me to tell him where to go he wants to tell me where to go but he doesn't know where he's going he's just wandering around and he's been really confused and <laughs> kind of overly emotional and it's it's like he's having he's confused and he's having trouble having trouble thinking um and i'm totally totally feeling that as well so this was just to kind of explain where I'm at right now because you guys are also in a similar pocket of energy even if you're watching this five years from now when none of these retrogrades are relevant for you. So I think that's my preamble. Let's get to your cards. Obviously it's just number one, two, three, and number four. Hey Paul One, welcome to your reading. The first thing that's coming at me here is to ask if any of you guys are mediums or have been interested in developing your mediumship abilities or some of you might just be starting to sense spirits or maybe you perceive them as ghosts or energies in particular locations and you feel like you can communicate with that energy there's just something here about communicating with disembodied energy you got this communication card which Clearly, this is about, you know, mind to mind telepathic communication. And that is also what we see here with Portal Keeper. This is the Beyond Lemuria deck. And this particular card talks a lot about how the Lemurians were, were telepathic with each other, how they communicated non verbally. And this Portal Keeper card is all about becoming a mystic, embracing your mystical side and, and, and uh, exploring um, the specific words this card uses is the edges of your reality. You're going to the very edges of your senses and expanding outwards and outwards and seeing kind of how you can push the envelope and seeing what is out there. And that is coming from a place because you have centered yourself in your heart, this home card. Home, home is where the heart is. You guys have probably been going through a period of heart healing and that has been allowing you to unlock uh, these new potentials, these new skills. You're unlocking your soul gifts to do with telepathic communication and probably for a lot of you, mediumship. And mediumship doesn't have to mean, you know, what you see in movies, somebody holding a seance and communicating with passed on spirits. That's a... Uh, that's one way that can go. You that For some of you, that it could be like that. But for others of you, it could just be you're receiving a lot of messages. And if you can really tune in to those messages, notice when they're coming in, you guys can 
really have the opportunity to develop like full on telepathic conversations with your guides or whatever um, beings are coming through for you. I know for me, I would love to be able to do something like that, but my, my communication with my guides and being some around the cosmos, it's always really like claircognizant and send it like sensations. I almost never receive direct like telepathic, like as in verbal, like I never have conversations. <laughs> Very rarely do I have conversations like that. And I would love to be able to do that, but I don't really know if that's in, if that's in the cards for me, this life journey, but for you guys, I think it is. You have the, the potential to be able to communicate in a very conversational, that's the word I'm looking for, conversational capacity with disembodied beings. Yeah, and now just uh, moving on to the tarot cards down here. What I said about heart healing, finding you're really realizing that home is where the heart is because you guys have been through some kind of upheaval that you've been healing from. The star card. This is always after the trauma of the tower coming down, down to earth to be, to be healed. This is the fallen star. You had some kind of journey you had to go through where you fell and now, but now you're getting your, now you're getting your feet on the ground. Now you're getting, finally getting stuff organized so that you can feel secure for the first time in a while because there has been this element of a sorrow. Six of cups is typically that nostalgic memories card but clearly this one has a different interpretation it is sorrow but this is interesting coming up because i have been thinking a lot lately about how processing pain you know we can we can be down in in grief and pain and just emotional suffering but one of the levels of emotions we can go through in order to transmute that is to turn our pain into sorrow i feel like sorrow is the highest transmutation of like painful emotions, emotional pain, because once your pain becomes sorrow, once you can feel it in terms of sorrow, instead of just grief or agony or misery or despair, sorrow has an element of almost beauty to it. Um, I'm not that, not that it's not, not that this is desirable or good. Sorrow is still painful, but I'm really reminded of something Tolkien says, I think in the Silmarillion, I don't remember the exact quote, but it's something to this extent. The legends of the Elder Days are filled with sorrow and beauty, but their beauty chiefly comes from that sorrow. So that is one of the confusing things about the human experience where we really can find beauty in sorrow. And when some kind of heroic myth or some kind of hero's journey, some story is imbued with a certain element of sorrow that can really make it resonate um, more viscerally for us. And it opens up elements of understanding why we go through pain, why we choose painful experiences. Because maybe if you think of a hero's journey, maybe the hero chose to enter something difficult, chose to go through suffering because it was a worthy cause because he knew he would come out the other side and it would be worth it. Even if he was injured or even lost his life in the process, there was a greater picture at work there and going through that sorrow was worth it. And we just need to be able to transmute the pain into sorrow so that we can start to process it. Once you're in sorrow, that is actually a good place to be because that is when you're processing your pain and moving through it. I would say that like, that is one of the higher levels of going through the grieving process is feeling your pain as sorrow instead of something like agony or misery or despair. And here you are with the fool right in the middle. This is your rebirth, refinding yourself, finding the beauty uh, from a place of innocence because you have transmuted your pain and turned it into sorrow. And once you're in sorrow, you're working through it. And now you're even going to be able to let go of it and be able to see the world with the eyes of a child. This card always creeps me out with this creepy doll. I don't know if any of you guys have a weird thing with dolls, but a new rebirth. And I was thinking about the fool last night, actually, because I would not be surprised if this the fool card came up <laughs> in all of the other piles as well, because 
if you listen to my little spleel before I got into your reading, I was talking about how right now there's like six retrogrades going on and I feel like everything is being unlocked. The image I keep seeing actually is of hinges breaking, like snapping apart and then like floating away in pieces. Everything is coming apart. Everything is going apart in pieces. And I actually was thinking about that and I understood for the first time what people mean when they say the zero point field. That is like people talk about that sometimes when they talk about the fool, that zero, zero point field. It is just nothingness, but kind of stretched out open potential. And that is where you guys are sitting in the zero point field, I think is the word that applies most strongly in this case, not just the fool, but it, think of zero. You guys are at zero right now. And where do you go from zero? That is infinite potential. You can go anywhere. And where but <laughs> you guys specifically are going somewhere great because coming up, you have the Empress. And strength coming into such a position of self-embodiment is what I just heard. Sitting in your feminine power. And the Empress is that translation point between the transcendent and the physical, between the unknown and the known. It like um almost like a what is the word I'm looking for? A focal point or a fulcrum. The Empress is a fulcrum and you're embodying that with a lot of complete inner strength and integrity. That That is actually, wow, you guys actually have, out of five tarot cards, you have four major arcana. So seeing something like that, that always means that you guys are going through. And the fool in the center here, <laughs> you're, you're going through the zero point field that I actually just saw like a filter. You're being filtered out a lot of your past a lot of your ego not ego that you want to keep because we don't want to get rid of all of our ego right then we just be awareness if we get rid of our ego entirely we are now just nothing but awareness floating around in all that there is so you're not getting rid of all of your ego don't panic but you are getting rid of some of the aspects of your ego that no longer serve you that are no longer pleasant for you or useful in any way and just they get to drift off. You're, you're going, you're passing through a filter and coming out the other side is going to be a lot of just this embodied power harmonizing the transcendent and the imminent. And that is why you are unlocking these abilities um, of mediumship because you're able to be a translation point with the Empress with and the strength card. You are now it's like your mind is becoming more permeable, more open. All of those locks and hinges are being blasted apart and floating away. And now you guys can communicate like this, your mind to mind communication, because now with uh, some of that ego filtered out, you're floating in a much more open space and you can be the portal keeper. I love that that's a pink cat on there. You can be the portal keeper where you can Think about what that means to be a portal keeper. Almost like you are in charge of the portal. You are in charge of the doorways. You get to decide to decide where you go. You can program the portal and choose where you go. You can choose where other people go. Some of you are going to be able to, or you already have this ability within you, but you're remembering it. You're unlocking it. The ability to be an Akashic record reader. You guys are going to be able to go into the Akash and read it. Read it for, probably for other people. Absolutely potential here to be to have a, a career as an Akashic Records reader, some kind of psychic, some kind of spiritual teacher, but definitely to do with the Akash because your, your mind is getting some of the junk filtered out so that you can um, dissolve into, into the ether like that. That is really cool. I, I, I love this. I love this journey you guys are on. I wish I could have more of that. I mean, I'm going through a similar pattern, but it's not, it's just not, like skewing in this way. Um, I have uh, no, no ability to like open the Akashic records and re read it for somebody. I haven't, I haven't figured out how to, how to do that. For me, information just downloads in, but some people um, can like deliberately, they can meditate and they can imagine like go traveling to the Akashic library, which people can just visualize as a, as a regular library and opening a book and like receiving information that way. And that's what I'm talking about for you guys. Something like that or mediumship abilities where you're literally talking, communicating with spirits in a very conversational way. So that is really cool. 
And I think that is what I'm seeing for you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pile two, welcome to your reading. Your guys' whole reading is bookended by the high priestess and death. So welcome to your transformation. I feel like Mother Neptune is coming through for you guys to, well, first of all, open your third eye. Pineal perspective. If any of you guys have been having weird headaches in either the middle or your forehead or like the very center of your skull, this is your third eye being activated. If you've been seeing flashing lights um, just around the edges of your eyes, um, don't worry about it. <laughs> your third eye is opening up and that is because of this divine feminine energy coming down. Uh, you're channeling as a high priestess. As a high priestess, you are channeling divine feminine and since you synced up with this video with Neptune, highly, highly likely for most of you that you're resonating with Neptune on the level of your emotional body. Um, some of you might already know that Neptune is a higher octave of the moon. So if you're not familiar with Neptune at all, just think of everything you know about the moon and but evolve it a little more push a little more past it because neptune is that similar kind of emotional dreamy energy but way more dreamy it's like submerged and deep 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 um i feel like neptune i know we call neptune neptune but i always feel like we should call her neptuna neptuna because it's such a feminine energy to me like a deep deep cooling submerged ocean so this neptune energy you're channeling it's emotional and sensitive and deeply deeply psychic but it is much more stabilized than moon energy um i don't know how much you guys pay attention to the moon cycles or how much how sensitive you are to that different people are all kind of you know feeling the moon differently but i almost I've almost always had a dislike for all of this. Not really a dislike, but it's just kind of like a, almost like a confusion or like I don't quite get it about all like the moon goddess stuff in, in spirituality. You know, we have the triple moon goddess and all everybody tracking the moon cycles and doing rituals in the new moon and the full moon. And I'm always just like, it's so fast. The moon travels so fast. Like every two days it's in a new sign and I can feel it. I can feel it every time the moon changes sign and it, it affects my emotions and just my energetic state. And it's like exhausting. Why is the moon always going so fast? Why is it always changing everything so much? And it's just affecting everything all the time. And it's like, we just get through a new moon and then it's a full moon. And it's just this whole, like <sighs> these intense energetic shifts so quickly all the time. I don't really think that that's that great. Um, that's why I'm not super into moon goddess stuff, but Neptune is that same kind of vibration but just so much deeper that it's much 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 more stable think of how long neptune stays in a sign it's like 12 years or is it even longer than that i don't remember but i know neptune at the time of filming this has been in pisces for many many years and it has been imbuing the world with like a dreamy ambiance if you have you guys noticed how like ambient th ambiently themed things have become so widespread and pervasive lately like everybody's listening to uh you know chill beats to study to on youtube or any kind of music on youtube that you know is like the same thing looped for 12 hours people want to sit in the same energy for a long time they don't want to listen to like a three minute song they want to listen to that three minute song for 10 hours <laughs> as what i'm talking about that's the difference between the moon and neptune and how neptune takes um something the moon will just buzz through and neptune is the same thing for a long time and i really like that i find that much more uh natural and stable because it, it is longer and it lets you digest that energy and the point of this whole tangent is that um it is possible to tune to have your emotional body tuned to neptune instead of the moon and although you'll still feel the energetic shifts of the moon um Tuning your emotional body to Neptune can provide you with a lot of stability. That is something that um, 
I have had done from a healer and she uh, told me that my whole soul group, that our emotional body is attuned to Neptune instead of the moon and that, you know, we just needed to remember that and sync it back up. But I honestly feel that um, if you ask, if you ask the universe, if you communicate with Neptune that, you know, you can do that energy work on yourself and you just have to ask and meditate on it and you can get yourself attuned to Neptune. So if you're going through, if you have like a lot of emotional ups and downs all the time, or if you just feel kind of unstable emotionally, um, that is working with Neptune can really help with that and ask her to come in for you and to provide you with that long, slow, deep psychic stability of Neptune. So that was all coming up because of this high priestess card. If you were talking about Neptune and we have the high priestess, you guys clearly have a, have a connection there. And this is all working up to your, your death trans, trans, uh, transformation. This guys, all these retrogrades are, are killing me. We got Mercury retrograde on top of all of this. I can't even make words. <laughs> so bear with me. So, okay. Moving through your tarot cards here, the three of swords, the eight of wands and the nine of pentacles. So there's going to be a brief period of heartbreak, but it is just to like, I just felt like a puncture. Something is going to be punctured to like, let the air out and to make room for shifts. And it's going to happen really quickly. Um, I just saw like a kid falling and scraping their knees. So I don't think this three of swords is going to be anything really like traumatic. This isn't a tower moment. We don't have any tower here, but there's going to be something happen quickly. Like, and I don't want anybody panicking, thinking that there's going to be some kind of disaster in their life. It's just this energy of a puncture wound of somebody falling and scraping their knee. Um, and that energy can manifest in almost any different way. You could just like knock over a cup full of red wine and spill it all over your, your floor and you can get it all cleaned up. <laughs> but you shattered your glass, that kind of thing. Something, sh something might come through and shock you. This three of swords with the eight of wands. But it's not... That energy pocket is just coming up so that you can work through it. And it's almost a side effect of um, something bigger you're going through. It is just, I feel like you have some kind of stuck energy, some kind of stuck energy that needs to be shocked and punctured and just to get that moving, almost like popping a blister or something. So don't worry too much about that, but you'll notice it when it happens. Just try to be aware as you're moving through the next few weeks for some of you it might just be a couple of days and wait for the puncture wait for the balloon to pop something's gonna go something's gonna give and it'll I think it'll only suck for uh, like a few moments and then you'll realize oh this is that this is when the balloon popped this is when everything starts to shift and just realize that whatever that thing happened whatever that energetic pop was that was just to clear out some room and shift things for you and you're coming into the nine of pentacles that's why I know that this isn't going to be a major major tragedy for you. It's not going to be a tower moment because it's followed by the nine of pentacles. This is almost like someone could lose their job and be totally shocked for like an hour and then come home and find out that, I don't know, you randomly came into like $20,000, like on an insurance claim or an inheritance, or you were like offered another bigger, better job. Nine of pentacles is all about your own independent sovereignty. You know, this could also be a breakup that you could feel maybe you were on the rocks and you're feeling it, feeling it. Oh, I should, should I break up with this person? Should I break up with this person? And then suddenly they dump you like out of nowhere and you weren't expecting it. And for a second you were shocked and then you go, oh, well, wait a second. I was going to break up with them. So this is totally cool. And I was spared the whole trauma and I was worrying about how to break up with them. And I was worried about what they were going to do, but they actually just took care of, the, care of the problem for me. And now, bam, now you are independent and the whole world is open to you all leading up to this death transformation. So that little, I think you guys are actually really lucky and it is because you are evolved beings. You don't get the high priestess card unless you are sufficiently evolved and advanced in your personal development and on your spiritual path. You, you get to have this transformation, this death moment without having the tower moment. You don't have to have any major catastrophes. You get to have like a minor energetic ripple and since you are already energetically refined, since you guys are already consciously working on yourselves and on your journey, that means that instead of having a whole tragedy happen to make you transform, you just need to have a small blip and you guys will are so sensitive that that little blip, you will ride that current 
Other people need to have a major tragedy or catastrophe happen in order to make them transform. They need something huge to happen. You guys are sensitive and refined enough that you don't. You just need a little blip and those little currents will ripple out and you can ride them as if they're huge tidal waves. So that is really cool. That is really cool. This is what we want to see because humans have always needed these major societal tragic breakdowns in order to get anything to shift. But we want to get into a place where we need little, little things, little blips, and we can harness that power because we're sensitive and refined to make major shifts. So cool. <laughs> so cool. And all of this, yeah, inner child and trust your innocence. You got, you got these cards right next to each other. That is double duty, double message, the same message out of two decks inner child and trust your innocence. So when you come through your rebirth, because after you die, you are reborn, metaphorically, no one's actually dying here. You're going to be coming, this is, you know, we don't have the full card here, but this is the full, this is the zero point field. This is all possibilities open to you. Just, you know, you're going to be able to look at the world as if you were a child. Try to remember yourself when you were four years old Remember what that felt like. What did it feel like to be in complete awe of the world and to like run barefoot through the grass or through the forest, just blowing bubbles and running through the sprinkler? That's the kind of joy and innocence that is coming for you on the other side of this death moment. So whatever energetic ripple happens to you when you notice the bubble pop, if you feel momentarily destabilized uh, or freaked out or if you want to sit down and cry, do whatever you need to do, you know, your, do your emotional processing, do your grieving if you need to, whatever, that's totally cool. But just know that looking forward that on the other side of this moment, I mean, you're standing in your sovereignty with the nine of pentacles and then you're being reborn as your, your truer, more innocent self. Yeah, and remember that if you're feeling energetic ups and downs to tune into Neptune because she can give you that longer term, broader perspective stability that you just can't get if you're tuned into the moon. So, yeah, think long term, think long term, think big picture, think psychic depth. Do not worry about the small momentary mundane blips in your reality because you guys are channeling much larger, much more deeper and more profound energies than that. And just remember guys to trust your innocence. Look at that. That's who you're going to be. And I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pal three, welcome to your reading. Neptune wants you guys to know or to recognize. I think you guys already know this on some level, but she wants you to consciously recognize that you have been balancing your masculine and feminine energies. And that is allowing you to come into alignment. You guys are getting aligned in every sense of the term. This is all, all leads up to this full spectrum. This is what you guys are becoming full full all of your chakras in alignment all of your dualities in alignment the all the various poles of your nature everything coming together into alignment and i totally understand why this is coming through because it, um i'm filming this on june 22nd 2020 this is so this is actually a this is a 222 day right it's 2020 and it is the 22nd so that is um, everything coming into balance, everything being balanced. And all the 222 portals in 2020 so far have been uh, really... I don't even know how to describe it in a word. To say they have been significant is an understatement. But I didn't even rem rem remember that this was a 222 portal day until just now. So that is relevant for you, even if you're watching this in five years and it the day has nothing to do with a two um all of you need to be watching out for two 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 or two 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 <laughs> watch out for twos that is that is a part of this balancing you guys have been doing and everything is coming into alignment like all your chakras are lighting up you're downloading new chakra templates 
and your energy body is getting aligned and your masculine feminine especially is getting aligned. My point of that bit about the 222 two, two was, yeah, it's the 22nd today and two days ago on the 20th, that was the June solstice. And I was meditating through the moment of the solstice and right at the moment of the solstice, and I did check it with the time after the fact, um, I saw like a pendulum, like an axis click into place with the core of the earth. And I felt like, okay, everything just clicked into place. Everything became aligned. And then after when I was looking around on YouTube, I kept seeing messages about coming into alignment with the divine will. And I was like, okay, that's what's going on right now. And this is relevant for you guys, no matter when you're watching this, you're coming into alignment, like literally with everything, with yourself, with the world, with the cosmos, everything is finally clicking into place. And you guys have been working on that because starting down here with your tarot cards, where you've been, six of earth and four of air. The six of earth is all about getting getting everything in balance, getting your material world in balance, like somebody balancing their checkbook, somebody balancing their diet. And that that's funny, actually. So something here about your diet. Um, I've been thinking a lot about how important it is to eat a balanced diet. I know everybody wants to in, be in some kind of fad diet where they eat only this kind of food or only that kind of food or don't eat that kind of food. Of course, diet is so, so, so unique and individual that I'm not making any sweeping statements about diet because we, everybody needs to figure out exactly what is what works for their own body. And that is that is part of the problem with diet that everybody thinks, oh, that was what worked for me. Therefore, that's what everybody should eat. No. Okay. Our bodies are so, <laughs> so individualized, especially some of you, some of you in particular, um, uh, I'm, I think I'm just supposed to say some of you have specific genetic things where you have unique dietary needs that you won't find the answers, you know, out there in the mainstream. So you need to really experiment and only trust your own, um, your own experimenting and your own intuition on what kind of diet is right for you. But what's been coming through for me lately is the importance of eating a balanced diet, no matter how many, how convinced we are about our current diet. For example, I eat a ton of vegetables. I love vegetables. I eat giant salads every day, every day, every day, just um, and I always thought that that until like yesterday, I thought that was fantastic because how healthy is that? Right. Uh, but I also have a lot of like random pains in my joints. Sometimes like all my joints crack. I have loose joints. Uh, I have a lot of hip pain, even though I'm 31. Uh, but that's been my whole life. I've always had joint problems and not, not really majorly, but just enough to be irritating. And I never really thought anything of it. Cause like I said, that's been my whole life and I just kind of live with it and it's not a big deal. It doesn't really stop me from doing anything. It's just sometimes I hurt. <laughs> and it turns out, I just found out yesterday that for some people eating too many vegetables, eating too many of certain types of vegetables can cause joint pain. I couldn't believe it. Are you serious? There can be a negative effect of eating too many vegetables. I, I almost didn't believe it until I started I was feeling great, then I ate a giant salad, and then sure enough, an hour later, all of my joints started to hurt, and I started to feel all these pains in my body, and I had never made the connection before. Looking back, I realized, oh my god, I'll be feeling great, I'll eat a giant salad, and then my, my joints will start to hurt. I, so, <laughs> I don't know why this is relevant for you guys, but somebody's going through the same kind of thing where they're realizing that they, you, you might have thought you were on the perfect the perfect diet and then it turns out that it probably needs more balancing that's that, that's what this is all about balancing finding the balance even if you think that whatever you're doing is perfectly healthy it might just be too extreme so i'm not going to stop eating salads i'm not going to stop eating vegetables but i am going to maybe try to not eat a giant massive salad and only that all at once i'm going to try to eat make sure all of my meals this is this is just what i'm doing personally this is going to be my experiment i'm going to try to make sure all of my meals you know, have a little bit of all the food groups, a little bit of balance <laughs> and something like that you guys have been doing, especially paired with this four of air. This card is literally about cleaning your house. <laughs> it's 
you know, making space, physically getting, getting rid of all the dust, all the mud on the floor, all the pine needles on the floor, getting all the gunk out of your house, but also just clearing the air energetically. So, and this is all centered on the father. Obviously, that is all your masculine authority, your uh, c structures. I don't mean control, control structures in a negative way here. I mean that, just think of the archetypal father. Obviously, this isn't how this plays out for every family, but the archetypal father is the one who provides the safety, security, the structure, and usually the physical structure of the home. So you have been really kind of getting your shit together, bringing everything into balance, getting everything organized, getting everything organized. And that has been tuning into your masculine energy. Um, but then you absolutely moving forward, you're bringing in your feminine energy. And that is how everything is clicking into place, coming into alignment. Because you've got the 11 of water, emotions and intellect paired right up with emotions. <laughs> so if you guys, at the time of seeing this, if you're starting to feel suddenly emotional, even though you have been feeling unemotional, because you were coming out of this really grounded, more masculine, more grounded, more like physical energy, and suddenly out of nowhere, it's like a tidal wave is overcoming you of, of, of feelings that maybe it's coming through in the next uh, few days for you, but you might just feel, I feel a wave coming in, a wave of emotions coming in. And that's okay. Ride that out and really lean into it, honestly. Um, think about how you can use that emotionality to uh, balance out this more physical, intellectual paradigm that you've been in. And because you're supposed to bring these things together, this is your transformation. This is your transformation. So if you've been on one end of the spectrum, if you've been, if the pendulum has been swung all the way over here, it's about to swing the other way, but you don't want to stay at either extreme. You want to come back into center. And that's what you're, that's what you're doing. You guys are living out and embodying what I sensed at that moment. So the solstice, when the, when the axis clicked into place, you're coming into alignment um, with your, with your earth star chakra, the center of the earth is your earth star so chakra. That is the subpersonal chakra. So grounding meditations, guys, imagining being traveling down to the center of the earth and communicating with Gaia would be excellent for this. Cause you need to have that. You need to be connected to your earth star chakra in order to, I mean, embody your creativity here and get this full spectrum of your energy body in alignment. So where this is all going creativity. This is the, when you feel this wave of emotions overcome you and you might be uncomfortable about it, or you might feel like you don't want this. Um, but remember that that emotional wave is what is going to unlock your creativity. If you guys have, you guys are creative deep down in your souls, but maybe you've forgotten it. Maybe you really liked to paint as kids, or maybe you were in band in high school and, but you left that behind. Wow. My chair my office chair, my like desk chair just moved and it totally freaked me out because I'm the only one home. Then my cat jumped off of it. I, <laughs> um, that really distracted me. I don't know how that mirrors whatever you guys are going through, but that, that, that was alarming. I don't know. I thought the chair was moving on its own and I was about to, about to be very interested in whatever was going on, but it was just my cat. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, you guys have some kind of deep-seated creativity, but I feel like you've kind of gotten out of touch with it because you got distracted by the world. You had to go to school. Maybe you had to go to school for a job, you know, that could get you money so that you could live your life. And maybe you had to give up your artistic endeavors for your family or just for your career or just because you kind of lost interest and got exhausted. But that was because you had to get grounded and do your... You had to get your shit together. That's what you guys were doing. You were getting your shit together. But... Now that you've got it together, that your emotional and right brain and creative and intellectual or um, intuitive side can come back. You guys have been in your intellectual side. Your intuitive side is coming back in. And this is a beautiful invitation. This is also your sacral chakra, which is the feminine chakra, and which is balancing back out with your solar plexus chakra that you have been in and coming into alignment, your solar plexus and your sacral chakra aligning with the earth star chakra. But yeah, Beautiful opportunity to rediscover your creativity, your artistic talents, any of that. 
you know, just get up and dance, just turn the stereo on and dance around your kitchen if that's what you want to do. But whatever, just trust your impulses on that. If you want to go down to the arts and craft store and buy a bunch of paint and just like splatter it around on a canvas, do that. Just ride the wave of your creativity because for you guys, there's so much potential here for that to be the next great phase in your life. You might think, well, I can't, I can't be a creative. I can't be an artist. I can't be a writer. I can't be a dancer, whatever. It doesn't matter if you're 90 years old, you can, you can rediscover your creative talents. Just trust your passion on that. Follow your passion because if you're doing, if you're creating your art or doing your creative project from your place of passion and love, then it will just, it will just bloom. Just do it without any expectations of any specific outcomes, but just do it because you love it. Just, just love what you do and do what you love. You're not necessarily going to be able to quit your day job right away and go live as a painter, but cultivate that on the side and take it from there, guys. Just Make the time to do something creative that you love. That is where this is going because you're going to have to channel this full spectrum energy. You guys are getting this major upgrade to your energy body and all of that energy is going to have to go somewhere. That is why the creativity is important. Now that you're aligned, you can channel that energy. And if you just try to sit in it, you're going to be all agitated and yeah, you're going to be agitated and it's not going to be good. You have to channel that creative energy somewhere. So get a creative project, literally whatever that is for you it, it, the possibilities are endless but you this is your this is your invitation this is neptune telling you it is time to get creative and it is time to rediscover your creative gifts so i hope you guys have fun with that that is what i'm seeing for you i love you guys hope to see you again soon bye hey pile four welcome to your reading i was very curious about what was going to happen with you guys because the other three readings were very similar um, but I knew yours was going to be different because I had to change the background to black. We are back in black because you guys have the white cards and they would look like ass on that white background. So, but switching to black, having this black backdrop for you, that's symbolic. Obviously there's some kind of darkness behind you, like literally and figuratively. And that is really reflected in the cards. I feel like you guys are... I mean, okay, you've got the Emperor, the King of Swords, the Queen of Swords, Justice, and the Hermit. Like, wow. Okay. <laughs> and even this Justice card is birds, which is air energy, like the swords. And this is such masculine energy. You also have inner strength, your sacral chakra. I think you guys are coming out of a paradigm where you have been way too submissive and passive and like forgiving almost. This could be the reading for somebody who has been in an abusive relationship. I don't think that's it for everybody, but this is the most obvious, most universal kind of metaphor for this energy. Somebody who has been in just a toxic, toxic relationship where the other person just was taking advantage of them. I don't just mean like a shitty relationship. I mean where the other person was actively abusing this person, the person that this reading is for, where, and you, you just kept forgiving them, kept making excuses for them, kept, you know, you going, Oh, they're only like that because they had this shitty childhood. <laughs> I understand why they're like that. Um, you know, I'm going to try to heal them. I love them. You know, sometimes they're good and, you know, I, I can see past all of their wrongdoings. I need to forgive them. I need to practice forgiveness. I need to be loving um, and just being way too submissive throughout that whole thing. But that is, it is that energy of like the the bad side of compassion and love and empathy when empathy goes too far and we use it to make excuses for people um and when we kind of martyr ourselves be like okay i'm just gonna put up with this person abusing me because of excuse 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 but you guys are done with that you are done with your excuses you're starting to realize that you need to get out of that victimized empath paradigm. You guys are becoming the empowered empath. And to do so, you need to bring in your more empowering masculine energies. You need to, you guys are activating your, your uh, solar plexus, your solar plexus. The solar plexus is the, the chakra that 
uh, can really protect you when you've been in a paradigm of being too submissive and too forgiving and too compassionate. <laughs> um, like you got this em emperor energy coming in. You are becoming the lion. You're becoming the lion. You are embodying your own complete sovereignty of nobody has the right to fuck with me. And like, this is just, it is so emphasized. These cards are all saying the same thing. King of swords, same thing. The king of swords is so much like the emperor, but it is, it is, he, he's an even, he's like a sub archetype of the emperor being even more sharp of intellect. He skews entirely intellectual and mental and solar plexus masculine sovereignty and the queen of swords paired right together. She is every bit as sovereign and masculine and intellectual and perceptive as the King of Swords. She's even more perceptive than the King of Swords because she brings in her, her feminine side and she can see clearly. And I, I love the Queen of Swords because she is, she has an anointing power to her. And I think you are in some senses, anointing yourself, you're giving yourself the permission to make this shift and to embody your, your rightful sovereignty, justice, all things are coming into balance, the scales are balancing, and it is time that you, but I feel like you are balancing the scales, you are balancing the scales for yourself by stepping into your power. And this is really the hermit energy of, you know, going inside, lighting your own lamp, your inner journey, your inner journey. You have been doing a lot of inner work and you were starting to see how the situations where you have been a victim were actually of your own creation or co-creation at least. Not to blame the victim, but we all go through periods where we realize, wow, maybe I just thought that, oh, this person was doing this to me. This person was victimizing me and I was sitting here being the powerless victim. But Really, that is a mentality. Really, you somehow <laughs> allowed yourself to continue to be in this situation and you kept making excuses for the situation and you kept just being passive and you kept contributing to the perpetuation of this situation that was no good for you. But that was just, that, that's no, no judgment, no moralizing, no beating yourself up about it. That was actually a journey you put yourself through, like from a higher perspective, your higher self and you decided that you would go through this journey. When, but when you incarnated, you always knew you would go through this. And it is so it was the journey of activating your solar plexus. It was so you could finally work through that, you know, that soul cycle and learn the lessons, learn the lessons. And you have learned the lessons. This is your graduation day. This is when you go from being a victimized empath to an empowered empath, an empath that has totally braided in their masculine energy, their intellectual energy, and stands completely firm in their solar plexus, in their inner strength. So there's also an element here of letting go of all validation all, all external validation if you have been well, i mean we all do it we all do it on some level so whatever you looked to other people for that is all falling away you know maybe you needed uh financial support from other people or physical security from other people or emotional support spiritual support or for the for most people it's just this so many people don't know what to think, what to feel. They're just constantly like asking their counsel, their friends and family around them. Oh, oh, what would you do in this situation? Oh, what do you think about that? And maybe it's like you do research. You ask, you ask your friend, you ask, you ask all your friends, you ask your family, you kind of get the sense of what everybody's doing. And then you would align yourself with what they were thinking and feeling. No more of that. No more trying to validate yourself with other people. Now you think and feel, especially think, especially think. I think you, you always kept your feelings more to yourself, but you used to align your thoughts with other people, aligning your thoughts with other people. And you're not aligning your thoughts with other people anymore. You are going to be just generating your own thoughts out of your own mind, validating them with your own solar plexus and sitting in them because you are the emperor. You are the king of swords. You are the queen of swords and you are seeking justice and you, you get it all from your inner self as the hermit because you light your own light. You light your own lamp. You are your own lamplighter. 
yeah, just such an empowering energy, such an empowered empath. If you guys haven't, if you're not familiar with that term, you can just look up, like type into YouTube, empowered empath. There is quite a bit of stuff that talks about, you know, what we think about as empaths, about how they're so sensitive and they're so compassionate. And then they're just, they're just special little snowflakes that can't do anything for themselves. And just all of that, you know, oh, just so sensitive and so fragile. Well, no, empaths aren't fragile. They're only fragile when they're a disempowered empath. You, When you learn to become an empowered empath, you realize the power of of being an empath about and about how you can be completely sovereign as an empath. So some of you, you might want to, you know, look into that term. You can see what comes up for you. Yeah. And what I was saying about how you chose to go on this journey, because this is your, your journey to wholeness. You are finally bringing in your other half because you were kind of skewed. You were kind of skewed before you were very feminine. You were very right brain, um, very empathic, very psychic, very intuitive very compassionate, but you need to, you really, really realize the importance of bringing in the other half of your nature. You know, this other half, the masculine half, the left brain half, the intellectual half, the half of an independent mind. That was never, you might've thought that that was something that wasn't part of you or that was unattainable for you, but that was never true. You just had forgotten that other half. You'd been split. And here you are coming into alignment, coming into harmony. And this is your journey to wholeness. This is you becoming whole. You are bringing all of the strands of yourself back together. You are harmonizing the masculine feminine duality. And it's funny because for the other readings, they were all coming from a masculine paradigm into a more feminine paradigm and harmonizing it in that direction. You guys are the other way. You guys were more feminine and now you're coming into your masculine energy and bringing it into alignment. But it's cool because we all at the end of the day, if it doesn't matter which side of the spectrum we started on, we all come into harmony and alignment and then we are all whole. We are all aligned and it doesn't matter which direction we went on, which way we started. We all come to the center point. We're all meeting in the middle. These readings, were, they all had such a shared theme. Um, Neptune is really, really coming through with these messages of coming into alignment and transforming into your new self in harmony in balance, in harmony. Now I really see why the phrase I was getting from Neptune was dreaming a new world because we are dreaming a new world where everything can be much more unified and harmonized and in alignment. Not that everything becomes the same or everybody becomes the same or that we become this, you know, people are afraid of things like the one world government or people are afraid of losing their individuality. That's not what this is about, but that is bringing everything into more into harmony, not into sameness, not even into oneness, but into harmony. What is a harmony, right? You think about a piano, you play a chord on a piano, all these different notes and all those different notes harmonizes. You still have all those different notes. They're not becoming one same note. They're not, they're not losing their individuality as notes, but they sound beautiful together. It is a harmony. That is what we're doing. And that is what Neptune wants to draw our attention to. Because we are dreaming a new world and in order to see this play out in our like society level, on the level of our society, we have to play this out first on the personal level. And if you're seeing this video, that is what you guys, this is one of the things you guys came here to do. You put yourself through this journey so that you could come into harmony within your own self, bring your own energies into harmony. And you are going to hold that harmony for the rest of the world to attune to. They can attune to that har energy, to that harmony, to your balance that you're coming into. And you might not feel like you're doing anything. You might not feel like you're serving anybody. You might just feel like you're going on your own personal struggle. But hold this harmony that you're coming into. And that will literally help the rest of the world. It's like a benchmark for everybody else to come back to. You're a tuning fork. And that will allow the dream of this new world that we're dreaming and that we're practicing in our, in our personal lives. That is how it will begin to manifest on a larger, more society based level. So your journey is a big deal for everybody. And you got this because you came here to do it. So just do your solar plexus work, stand in your inner strength, in your inner authority. This is, this is beautiful. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Good luck on your journey. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.